So they have what they term uh, in the what is you know in the women's health in field, the literature the literature um, add back therapy. So they they call it that I guess because frequently these patients will be on the hormonal contraceptives and then I guess when they were looking into the gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists they would stop those add on the um, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists and then they'd have these side effects so they'd add back the hormonal contraceptives to mitigate those side effects. But maybe ideally they never came off of them. They just added on the gonadotropin releasing hormone agent and then were able to mitigate the side effects that way. I'm not entirely sure if that's uh, completely appropriate, but they call it the add back therapy probably for that reason. So what does it do? Um, it consists of progestin or the combination progestin estrogens. And the point is to minimize that bone mineral density loss and the other adverse side effects. And hopefully, I believe, mitigate the flare, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so there's a few studies that have recently shown that estrogen-progestin combinations are more effective than the progestin monotherapy at protecting uh, against the bone mineral density loss. Um, so I think of uh, estrogen-progestin combinations being more effective in, um, in, uh, reduce for contraceptive. And so I'll, now I'm going to think of them as being better for bone mineral density loss. So think about this, though. It's the combination, but they're different doses than we typically see for a combined hormonal contraceptive. Right. So that's the other key takeaway, too. is we, And that's partly why they refer to it as add back, because originally we would stop. You know, we, we may do the hormonal, like the original combined hormonal contraceptives, initially for the, to kind of mitigate that initial flare, but then they would stop those and kind of let the therapy go on as monotherapy. They added back some of those hormones, but in different concentrations okay. than we would be if we were doing hormonal contraceptives. So that makes more sense. So yeah. it's different doses than they were initially on yeah. even early in their endometriosis. Yeah. Treatment. I understand. And, and it's because that when you add higher levels of estrogen, you're just that you're basically negating some of those anti-estrogenic effects that are supposed to be there to alleviate the endometriosis pain to begin with. So that's why if you look at like what we actually use for add back therapy options, like Cole said, we can either use a progesterone only, which could be like norethindrone five milligrams, or we could use something like um, Premarin plus norethindrone. So Premarin being like the conjugated equine estrogens, the 0 0.652, um, 625 milligram um estrogens, but it's different than the ethanol estradiol, even if the, the dose is different, like the way it's actually leads to the systemic concentrations, um, it can be a much more pronounced effect with the combined hormonal contraceptives. Um, even in the milligrams to micrograms and all that doesn't add up. Um, I did, I found a paper one time that, uh, I can try to find, I need to find again just in case anybody's interested, but, um, that basically walked through the, like basically the doses of in formulations of the different estrogen products, whether it's the menopausal hormonal therapy or, um, hormonal contraceptive and showed like the serum concentrations as a result. And it was very confusing to see it, but it made more sense. This stuff made more sense when you can see how that affects. Gotcha.